Hey, this is Horner. We're going to look at section 10.2. Uh, this one is called work. So we're going to work on work. No pun intended. Uh, work is done on a system by external forces. So remember we said that we have our system. So here's our system. And anything that affects the system from the environment, so this is our environment, uh, we call that work. So work can either go in or the system can do work on the environment so work can come out. So either way, uh, that can work out. Now, how do we know that there's work being done? It's because there are external forces, so forces outside of the system. Uh, the force of the wind does work on the system. So if our system is just the, uh, oh, the sail border, uh, and the in the sailboard itself the wind is outside of that system okay so the wind here is doing work and when it does work it then propels it because it increases the kinetic energy of the system after that surfer speeds up so that is a good example of how an external force does work uh, if I want to create work, um, or calculate work, sorry, uh, I do that using this equation. Work is equal to force times displacement. And notice it says by a constant force in the direction of displacement. So this force is just a single force that is always the same. It will not change. Although both the uh, the force and, and displacement are, are vectors, work is actually a scalar. Okay. Um, and then the unit of work here is a joule, and you can also say it's a newton times a meter because remember it is a force times a displacement. Force is measured in newtons, displacement is measured in, new in uh, meters. But a newton times a meter is a joule, and that's what we want to use for the value, uh, for the unit. Uh, so here's our first example. We have Sarah pushing a heavy crate of three meters along a floor at a constant speed. Notice that the speed is constant. There is no acceleration. So we're going to put no acceleration. Uh, she pushes with a constant horizontal, horizontal force of 70 newtons. How much work does Sarah do on the crate? So here we know that it's 70 newton force. We know the distance is 3 meters. And we know that the speed is constant. Uh, we've got to find out what work is. So let's go on to the next slide. Uh, we begin by just kind of looking at this. Uh, we want to see what's going on, so we're pushing it at a constant speed. That doesn't change, constant force, but we do have a change in distance, okay? Um, by pushing on the crate, Sarah it does increase the kinetic energy, so it makes work, uh, it, it does make sense that work is got to be positive here. So here we have work is 70 newtons, uh, that's our force, times 3 meters and that would be 210 joules. So that would be 210 joules all the way through. All right, so that's example 10.1. Uh, if we have force at an angle, now we're not just moving in the same direction as the motion. Now we're at an angle. And whenever we're at an angle, we have to use a different equation. So work uh, needs to be in that, uh, only in the direction of motion. And so because of that, if you look at this diagram here, you'll notice that we can transfer over here. Here is the angle, okay, with the direction of motion. So there's that same thing. And then we've got our, uh, oh, we can draw our parallelogram if we want to, kind of show what's going on. So we do have a force up and we have a force to the right. We're only worried about this bottom force. We're not worried about this force. So this force is the cosine of the angle because notice that this is the adjacent side of the triangle. So we're going to say that work is defined as F um, uh, D cosine of the angle. So if the force is at an angle of displacement, the component of the force that does work is just F times the cosine of the angle. So that's why you'll see that cosine in your equation. Uh, Here's a good example of kind of what's going on. Also, um, we've got before and we have after. Notice that the force is in the same direction as the motion. And so the cosine here of the angle is just equal to 1. So because of that, if we had cosine of 0 degrees, we know that that's 1. So really, we don't have to worry about this at all. This is just becomes 1. 
If it is anything less than 90, we've got to use the cosine of the angle because that will give us some sort of uh, some sort of reduction in the amount of force in this direction. Okay, so we don't want the force up and to the right. We only want to know what is the FD cosine of the angle, as we kind of explained in the previous slide. For the next slide, uh, this is force in an angle to displacement. If I uh, have something moving to the right and I have a rope that is trying to pull up on it but it doesn't go anywhere up and it's just sliding along, then we say the angle is 90 and the cosine of 90 is 0. If the cosine is 90 is 0, then the force times displacement uh, times the cosine of the angle is also 0. If this is 0, it doesn't matter what F and D are, the whole thing becomes 0. If I'm pulling in the opposite direction, we still are going to use FD cosine of the angle, but uh, now because our angle is greater than 90 degrees, we're going to slow down. So you'll notice that this arrow is a little bit longer than this one, and so the work we've done on the system is negative work. So this would be negative FD uh, when you factor in the cosine of the angle. So because the cosine of the angle is going to be bigger than 90, if it was like 95, you're going to get a negative number, and that will show up. So that's the forces at an angle of the displacement. If you go at a 180 degrees, uh, your cosine of the angle now is negative 1, and so you'll have a negative uh, force times displacement. So the sine of W is determined by the angle between the force and displacement. So we've kind of seen that a little bit. Uh, next thing is a quick check, and it says a constant force F pushes a particle through displacement delta R. So we know that we are moving through this displacement. And which of these three cases to the force do negative work? So they want to know, is it A, is it B, is it C, is it both A and B, or is it both A and C? So notice that the force is going this way, and my change in position is up and to the left. So they're going in opposite directions. These two are also going in opposite directions, but this one, the force and the change in uh, position are going in the same direction. So here, our angle is zero, and so we know that this is positive work. But because these two angles are greater than 90, we know that the work done by these two forces has got to be negative. So our answer, hopefully, when we check it here, is both A and B, and it is. So anytime you have an angle greater than 90, you know that there is negative work uh, being done. For 10.7 it says uh, which fo force below does the most work? All three of the displacements are the same. So we have a 10 newton force here and notice that this 10 newton force is uh, perpendicular. So this angle is 90 degrees and we said that if you do the cosine of 90 uh, that's zero so you don't get any work at all. Okay, So this one it says does the most work. It cannot be this one. If I take 8 times the uh, sine, well, let's see, let's do cosine of 60. If I do 8 times the cosine of 60, so that'd be 8 times 0.5, I get 4 newtons. Okay, uh, And the displacement's the same, so if we just call this displacement 1 meter for each one, and we know work is equal to force times displacement. For this one, it'd be 4 times 1, and that would be 4. So our work here is 4 joules. Let's look at the last one. This one is 6 newtons, uh, so it'd be 6. And we don't have to worry about sine or cosine. They're going in the same direction. Uh, so this would be 6 times 1, and this would give us 6 joules. So it looks like the 6 newton force uh, does the uh, the most amount of work, and that would be the correct answer. For uh, example 1012, this is work done in pulling a suitcase. So we have a strap that is at a 45 degree angle, so here's our 45 degree angle. Uh, pulling this through the airport, the tension in the strap is 20 newtons. So I know that T here is 20 newtons, and it's 20 newtons the entire time. How much work does the tension do if the suitcase is pulled 100 meters at a constant speed? So it's being pulled at a constant speed, and our distance here is 100 meters. So to do this one, uh, we've already looked at the overview. We now need to figure out what is the work. So work 
remember, is equal to FD cosine of the angle. But as they show here, your force is your tension force. So we've changed the equation to T times the distance times the cosine of the angle. And we're doing cosine of the angle because, remember, it's being pulled up this way, but its direction of motion is in the positive x direction. So we want to know how much force is here. So this is F cosine of the angle. Uh, so now we've got 20 times 100 times cosine of 45, and we get 1,400 joules. So the tension is needed to do work on the suitcase, even though the suitcase travels at a constant speed, and because we're overcoming friction. So it makes sense that that work is positive. The work is really just going into increasing the thermal energy of the suitcase uh, that is being generated with the floor through the wheels. And that's example 10.2. Uh, forces that don't do any work. So you can apply a force and do absolutely no work at all if it doesn't have any displacement. So there is no change in radius. The force is perpendicular to the displacement. So for example, if our force is pulling up, but we are moving in the positive x direction, or the part of the object on which the force acts undergoes no displacement, even if other parts of the object do move. And so um, this one is very, very similar to, let's say that this lady is carrying a glass. Uh, well, yeah, let's just say that she's carrying a glass right here. If she carries that glass, notice that this does go in the same direction of the motion, but there's no work done on this because it's not being lifted or dropped which would be um, a resisting force due to gravity. So there's nothing resisting it left to right. Okay, So there's no work done on that class when she moves. So that is a good summary of forces that don't do any work. A quick check 10.8, and this one says, I swing a ball around my head at a constant speed in a circle with a circumference of 3 meters. What is the work done on the ball by the 10 Newton tension force? So if we think about this, if the ball starts here, and I'm holding on to it here, and it goes in a circle like this. Now it's not going up and down. This is flat. Okay, so this is horizontal. If you looked at it from the edge, it would just look like this. Wink. Um, and so they want to know how much work is done on the ball. Well, the ball's not moving up or down, so there's no work done on it by gravity or with gravity, one of the two. Um, it's going in a circle, and remember, this is force times the displacement. And because it starts and stops at the same point, then this is zero meters, which means that our work should be equal to zero. There's no work done when we're doing that at all. The next section that we will do, actually we're going to do two, we'll do 10.3 and 10.4, which are kinetic and potential energy.